coming up on the House of Rods and Chains. Let's get lost in the belly of this messenger once again. This place always confuses me. Do another expedition for Amber, pick up my current Amber, all that good stuff. Finish the prospect. Three things of Thirsty Bombazine. Plus two Eleutherian Mysteries, nice. Hmm, literature is a deal, I'll take that. Where do I pick up my stuff? Here we go. Two chunks of blue, one chunk of soft. Let's send them on another expedition. Oh, offer passage to a rubbery man, always. Port report. Lament a false hope. Give me an Eletherian mystery. Deeper. Deeper. Wait, that wasn't deeper. Uh, here we go. Deeper. Expedition. Good luck. I'll be back for you anytime between a couple weeks and five years. Do I want to try to shape more stuff? I suppose. Yeah, why not? Blue amber. What recipes do I have so far? I have just a couple small things. Oh, I have one recipe. Soft amber plus Navartine gemstones equals two green amber. <laughs> Could do that, but let's try working with colored amber. Blue? How many does it add? Oh, it always adds three of everything. Damn, that's a lot of blue amber. Okay, blue amber plus Navartine gemstones? If it's expensive, it's gotta work, right? Please work, please work, please work. Golden Amber. Is that stuff worth like a super huge amount? The rubber men lean in as you break the hard surface of the mixture to get to the amber inside. They flute with excitement as bright shining golden amber glints in the dark. Yeah, I think that's much more rare than the other colors. I think that's worth a lot. I don't know what I can actually do with it though. Let's add another recipe. Blue Amber plus Navaratine Gemstones equals one Gold Amber. Golden Amber. Gold, whatever. Close enough. Let's experiment some more. Soft Amber. Plus... Oh, I can't add Literature. Damn. Chorister Nectar. Corster nectar and some tea? Corster nectar and tea. Did nothing. Hmm. Let's try again. I don't know, I don't have that much more that I can really work with. Caged catch? I think I tried this before, one caged catch, and I think that just fails. Yeah, completely failed, got nothing back. <laughs> okay, yeah. I think I'm done. Anything to do in the marketplace? I really want to know if I can trade the golden amber for something in particular. Like, these all take the three more common colors. What about trading for curiosities? No. Rubber trader stall? No. Yeah, where does it get used? Maybe I can add it to the shapeling vats? Once I have three of it? And then make something amazing? I don't know what it would make. Hmm. Does Mr. Barleycorn want it? Oh, I can give Mr. Barleycorn the seal of Mr. Benagerie now. 
I forgot that I did that and I haven't been back yet. Yeah, okay. I confess, I am amazed it has survived. My master was not tolerant of its various weaknesses, its single-mindedness, its cleaving to antiquated custom, how it chafed at its chains. Mr. Barleycorn dips the seal in ink and presses it to paper. Still, I'm glad it has found new purpose. I'm pleased to hear it's doing well. Yeah, I think that's it. I don't know what to do with Golden Amber. It's not a physical item, so I can't, like, sell it or anything. Wait, what is this? Commingling on a carapace? Oh, I think that's just... Oh! Trade Golden Amber for other flavors. Uh, sure? I can only change it for one piece of a particular color? Is that really worth it? Given that this seems to be super cool? Nah. Not gonna do it. I only have one. It's precious. At Caduceus now. I have enough moments of inspiration to do one more Rites of the Rose. It's to the winds of elsewhere. Investigate a mirror shard. Vision of the heavens. Oh, they have a bargain of bombazine. Mm, wait a minute. Wait, am I screwed because I'm cold? Oh no, I have a cold soul because I didn't name the thing in Paranesi. I didn't turn around. Well, shit. Man, that's so annoying. That's another trip back to the Reach just to try to progress further in Caduceus. I might just not do it. Back at Paranesi. What should we do this time? Let's take another crack at the Servitor. Port report. Oh my god, I forgot to do the hearts again. The officer changed to increase my hearts. Oh my god. Convince the servitor to change itself. <sighs> Always the frosty paws. Okay, let me change out my officers. Who gives me some hearts? Your iron. Oh no, and you. Wait. I already have my hearts equipped. Yeah, the ten hearts. Yeah, never mind. Okay, this is the best I can get. What a nice cat. Well, there's no point in doing the Grey Conformer again. Even though I can take another tour with them, I can't do the special thing. I couldn't speak with the Servitor again. Hmm. Should we do the Glib Performer because there's the chance that they might be Langley's lover? Now that I'm looking at the names, I'm not sure which of these two, the Glistening Deformer or the Glib Performer, I'm not sure which of those I had basically zero chance at making them like me. I don't remember, but the Glib Performer is the one we want. Ooh, actually, you know what? Let me look at, uh, let's read the text to see if there's any hints here about them maybe being Langley's lost lover. Glib Performer hoots with laughter, grabs an iron lamp. Mm-hmm. Whistle sharply, Grand Oak Door opens. 
Ooh, 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 look at this. At the top, you find yourself among bridges and precarious ledges. Vapor swirls below your feet. The performer dances across dizzying drops. Hmm, yes. I mean, it's... I don't think they literally mean dancing here, probably, but they might. But even if they don't, just that as a choice of words is... Enough to make me think that there might be something here. So I remember I refused to mistreat the prisoners before, and they didn't like that. So... I guess I need to torment the prisoners? Okay. <laughs> Help him torment the prisoners. <laughs> That's the spirit, declares the performer, poking an old lady firmly in the eye. 45% <laughs> chance of success. I could increase that significantly next time I come here by switching out my 10 hearts for 10 iron. Bah. You can't bring yourself to truly torment the prisoners, and settle for prodding them gently and making awkward jokes at their expense. Nevertheless, the performer seems satisfied. He grins and leads you further up a spiral staircase. Oh, I forgot about this. This is the thing where I need to have learned the first and second rules to proceed, which I do know them. Just looking at more of the description for the glib performer. Lifting a spectacle, scratching at the withered interior of an eye socket. No hints there. Um, yes, I've learned the first and second rules. The performer grins and bows, extending one arm. Then proceed. Don't look back. Don't name the nameless. You recite the rules carefully, and the performer smiles. He leads you under the arch and across the bridge. You had thought yourself as high as you could go, but you soon realize your mistake. A towering spiral staircase awaits you at the other side, concealed on the far, far side of a hollow column. The performer cooks his finger and you climb for what feels like miles. Beams and empty bird cages. You finally reached Paranesi's ceiling, and at times it threatens to bump your head. You follow the performer, navigating a latticework of wooden beams and tightropes, pushing aside dangling chandeliers, chains, and bird cages. Prisoners wander back and forth across the slender beams, moving with a practiced grace. Some of them seem to have been trapped in the hanging cages themselves. These prisoners know the third rule, says the performer. They can teach it to you. Ask the prisoners about the third rule. Finally, you'll be able to understand the laws of this place. When they hear your question, the prisoners are oddly evasive. One claims to have contracted amnesia. One pretends not to speak your language. Another, bearded, elderly, hops to a neighboring beam with the precision of a trained ballerina and scampers away. You'll need to try a different tactic. Hmm. Convince the prisoner to tell you the third rule. Threaten the prisoners until they start talking. Trick the performer into revealing the third rule. Ooh, that's tempting, because that uses veils. And even that is a 61% chance of success. I mean, it's the best chance, though. And also, it sounds like fun. The chaplains are forbidden from telling prisoners the rules. You'll be imprisoned for revealing it to you. Oh. Uh. Okay, yeah, as fun as that sounds, since there's a significant chance this is Langley's lost lover, let's not get them imprisoned. Re-imprisoned. Remember, these are all former prisoners of this place. 56% chance? Threaten the prisoners? I don't want to do that, but... Fuck, I don't want to have to go to Paranesi 20 more times. Let's threaten them. <laughs> you call her a moon-faced young man and employ the maximum amount of coercion with a solid heaping of helping of ear boxing. Oh no. I still failed. 
It's no use. I can't tell you, sobs the round-faced prisoner, swinging his lamp so violently you're almost knocked to your doom. I can't, I can't, it wouldn't be right. I'm sorry I did that, okay? I'm just trying to avoid more tedium. Wait. I can try it again? I, I can try it again? What? Well, if I can try it again, let's try to just convince a prisoner to tell me the third rule. It's a 39% chance of success. That's not bad. You call her a moon-faced young man and employ all your charm and rhetoric with just a hint of coercion. Let's assume this is a different moon-faced young man, because if it was the one that I just did that to, I don't think they would talk with me. Bah. Same description. I can just keep doing it? Hmm. This feels like sort of a trap. Maybe the third rule is don't tell anybody the rules? Right? Maybe that's why it's letting me try infinitely? But I've already asked them, so maybe I should... Just... Leave? I don't know. It does seem oddly suspicious that it just lets me keep trying, because that's like guaranteed for me to succeed then. I'm... gonna back out. Leave Paranesi. Maybe next time, mutters the performer. Hmm. Didn't do anything. Interesting. Either it's not a trick, which seems strange, because why would it let me do it infinitely? Or I need to just not ask them at all. Right, maybe I failed just as soon as I asked anybody. Maybe I need to leave right away. Hmm. Damn. At the Eagle's Empyrean. Well, just left it after repairing my hull and, you know, all the normal stuff. Bought some bronze wood since it was a bargain. Let's explore this whole unexplored region. Because it's big and it probably holds the Xanthus moon. Yeah. This place is just gorgeous. So many different colored lights, so bright. I love how the predominant color is the swamp green of the sunless seas. It's a wonder. That must be the Xanthus moon. The Empyrean have built a homemade moon to light their corner of the sky. It's steel frame festooned with lamps. Oh, that's what this is. Oh my god. That is so cool. The Xanthus moon.
The nearest land to the Xanthus moon is the moon's sill. The path between it and the Empyrean main dock is well traveled by groups of small, privately owned engines. Each convoy resembles a crowd of fireflies drawn to the light of the moon. They travel here to perform the rites of resolution and renewal, and to conduct the mandate of the moon. Dock at the moon's sill. Several Empyrean engines have landed already. There's room for plenty more. The Imperials light only enough lamps to pick their way to the site of the ceremony. Occasionally there's a muffled curse as someone stumbles and falls. The Imperials gather in a large crater, huddled together, waiting. It's time for the Rite of Resolution. The Engineers have landed. They stand outside the circle of Imperials, their clothes in tatters smeared with oil and dirt, but they are safe and they are sound. All around you lanterns are lit, a warm glow grows and brightens. The crowd parts, the engineers climb up through it to the center. I can join it, with one supply. Before the engineers can be welcomed back, their names must be restored. Afterwards, they will want a good hearty meal. While working on the moon, they've had to make, make do with only plain rice. Each engineer's name is held by a loved one, who steps forward holding a wax scroll. Each scroll is soaked in a cup of wine till the ink runs from it and mingles with the liquid. Each engineer drinks the wine. The crowd erupts in delight. The engineers turn eagerly to what you've brought. They've had moon rations for weeks. Your fungal crackers, wrinkled apples, and pungent slabs of cheese are like a feast. They're delighted to gift you a memento of their deployment for it. One of the moon's broken, burned-out lanterns. It's said they bring good luck. Join the Imperials returning to their engines. Oh, uh, I should read this too. The ceremony is complete. It's time for the citizens of the Eagles Empyrean to return to their daily lives. The ceremony over, they depart, still holding their wax paper lamps. Impatient captains frown at crew putting off boarding to prolong conversations. Exasperated parents hunt for straying children. It'll be a little while yet before the moon's sill is back under the sole stewardship of its caretakers. What a beautiful, interesting thing. So it looks like it's shaped like a... Uh, a moon that's... What do you call it? What's the word? You know, it's just a sliver. It's not a full moon. It's a something moon. I don't know. It's a sliver of a moon. I'm sure there's a word for that. Well, still all of this to explore. Damn. Let's do this one. Oh, candle winds. And a dowser engine. Ow. Yeah, let's get the hell out of there. Two dowser engines. I want to release a mine, but they're too close. Ow. Oh, shit. I forgot that the mines explode on projectiles, too, so it blew up on a projectile and hurt me. The Fulmination. I want to go to this one. can see the lanterns twinkling on the Xanthus moon.
crossroads. mind that. I always love to just mash the R button even if I can't do it just to hear that noise. <laughs> I don't know why. These are the gloomings. The gloomings where shadows hold court. Clot at night. Anything want to come out of this clot? Nope. Yeah, I think the Xanthus Moon was the only thing unexplored there. It's probably the last really major unfound thing in Eleutheria. I can't imagine must as much as hiding like here, here, here. Might as well go to Ackley's while I'm here. Looks like I might not be able to get through here, so let's go around this way. I just saw the tail end of something on the right side of the screen. Must be really damn fast. Ah, there it is. Observe. Eleutherian mystery. Yeah, I'd say that's explored. Nothing of note happened at Ackley's, so went back to Pan, did the usual stuff, and now I'm at Paranesi once again. Contemplate the sculptures, get my terror down. Bargain of tea. I'll consider that after I leave. Okay. I definitely want to go with the Glib Performer. Also want to try the Brutal Servitor again. Let's do the Servitor right now, because I need hearts for that and I've got my hearts equipped. Poor report. Brutal Servitor. Try to convince it. <sighs> the Follower once again. Continue walking stiff-necked. Don't look back. Okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to try to leave immediately? Am I going to try to convince somebody to tell me what the third rule is? I guess I'll convince them. Given that I seem to have unlimited chances. I'm going to go with the hearts one because that's the nicest option. And so I'll just go as I am. Help him torment the prisoners. Convince a prisoner to tell you the third rule. Hey, success in the first try. You've been cast into the depths of Paranesi. 
Yeah, cool. I've apparently learned the third rule. The prisoner's doleful eyes meet your own, and he gives in. He leans forward and whispers the third rule in your ear. You flinch back and narrowly avoid toppling to your death. There's a sudden unbalancing weight at your wrist. A lamp shackled to your arm. Paranesi begins to expand around you, staircases lengthening, walls retreating. The glib performer cackles. You've broken the third rule of Paranesi. Don't learn the third rule. You're alone and imprisoned and must change before you can hope to reach the exit. <laughs> cool. <laughs> 